What a beautiful setting for a bowl game. Honolulu and the Hawaii Bowl, Fresno State and Rice set to kick it off in just moments here on Christmas Eve 2014. Let's go down to the field. Here's Holly Rowe. Well, the Rice Owls have leaned on their defense all season long, and they have two terrific bookends as defensive ends. Zach Pat and Brian Nordstrom have been causing havoc for opponents all season long. They have combined for 28 tackles for loss and 17 sacks. Now, keep in mind this Fresno State offensive line has given up 36 sacks this season. Now, their coaches stuck up for them and told us, hey, they can only account for about half of those sacks. Other factors were at play, but they have been the rock that this Fresno State team has leaned on heavily lately. They said, we will lean on our offensive line again today. We'll see if they are the rock they stand on or if the defensive duo of Rice stands out. All right, Holly, thanks. So the coin toss won by Fresno State. They have deferred. So the defense of uh, Fresno State will be first on the field. There's the uh, Rice head coach, David Bailiff. Built himself quite a program yeah. for the Owls. Yeah, you know, he's done a nice job at Rice, and I think he was a little bit unhappy with the, uh, the rough start, 0-3. But when you schedule Notre Dame <laughs> and Texas A&M to start the season, now he didn't do that, but it was done for him, and that made it kind of tough. And the head coach for the Bulldogs, Tim DeRuder, also in his third season, and he has built quite a program as well in Fresno. Yeah, you know, they've changed their style since the days of Pat Hill, the power run game, game. They've become more of a zone read, try to get to the edges kind of team. And again, he's had a good year coming back from an 0-3 start where they started with USC, Utah, Nebraska. Ouch, that'll get your attention. But both teams... Rallying at the uh, end of the season and here meeting up in Hawaii for the Hawaii Bowl. So set the kick. Fresno State will uh, do the kicking. And you see their place kicker Cody Croning, former walk-on. A freshman who are in the starting role for this season. And the deep backs for the Rice Bulldogs. 18, Brendan Hamilton and 32, Derek Dillard. Super day for football, and the Hawaii Bowl is underway. That'll be Dillard, who takes the knee in the end zone, and the Owls will take the touchback to start. So the Rice offense led by their junior quarterback, Dreyfus Jackson, a first-year starter for Rice. Strong-arm kid. He's uh, had a nice season his first year as a starter, and he's really had to carry the team offensively the last several weeks because their rushing attack has struggled, so there's been a lot more on his plate. You see his numbers there, 21 and 8. That's really good, a nice ratio, touchdowns to interceptions. But he'll be challenged today if they don't get the rushing attack going. The quick throw to the outside. Mario Hull with the grab. Going to get six on their first play. And our Lexus Impact players for this Hawaii Bowl. Well, we talked about offense. Waller, the running back for Fresno State, almost 1,300 yards. Harper, over 1,000. Davis is 5'7", but he can really play. And Jordan Taylor is 6'5", wide receiver. There's Taylor with the grab. First down yardage for the Owls across the 40-yard line before he's knocked down. He's a, he's a talented player. He's a guy that a couple years ago in their bowl game, Went for nine and a buck 53 and four touchdowns. 42 yard line for the Owls and a fresh set of downs. The option pitch near side, Jawan Davis gets to the outside. Finally shoved out of bounds at the 34-yard line by Deron Smith. And Davis making 24 yards towards that goal of a 1,000-yard season. Well, on back-to-back -back plays, we saw the two stars that have to shine for Rice. You saw Jordan Taylor make a play, and then how you come right back with Davis. He gets to the perimeter, and that's what Jackson needs for this team to be successful offensively. The 
taken downfield. Jackson trying to reach Dennis Parks down by the goal line, incomplete. And it'll bring up second down for the Owls. You know, they had Taylor on the left side in the slot formation. And then with the two deep safeties, they just tried to attack the middle. And actually, they had a shot at it. Parks was open. Jackson just had that ball sail on him a little bit. Jackson, 57% completion rate on the season for the junior out of Cedar Hill, Texas. So second down and 10 for the Owls. The keeper on his own lead. Jackson looking for the outside, getting a block on the uh, outside for Mario Hall, the wideout, and got him across the first down yardage marker and inside the 20. Well, they did a great job of blocking the edge. They sealed the edge, and when you seal that corner, you can get to the you can get to the corner. They do a nice job. Watch, you'll see a good block on the edge right there. It was on number 43, Carl Mickelson. He didn't get leverage on it, and so Rice is able to get to the perimeter. So now Luke Turner, 35, in the backfield, in the quarterback position. They call this their owl formation. A Turner to throw, far side, Parks looking for yardage inside the 15. They'll mark him out at the 11-yard line. You know, we've seen Rice head to the perimeter on most of this drive, and, and we expected that. They are quite concerned with how good Fresno State is up front inside. Tyler Davidson, ni uh, number 92. Todd Hunt, 96. So Rice wants to try to get to the edge and avoid going inside as much as possible. Luke Turner, 35, in this owl formation. He's now five for six on pass attempts in his career. He'll run this time up inside the 10. Drop there by Todd Hunt, 96. But it's enough for the first down and first and goal for the Owls on a nice opening drive. Where is Jordan Taylor? That's what Fresno State has to think about. Six foot five, trouble down here in the red zone. So Dreyfus Jackson back in at the quarterback spot. Turner moves into the slot, bottom of your screen, along with Jordan Taylor. High snap. Trying to make something out of it. Flag down into the end zone, knocked away from Mario Hull on the defense by 28 Charles Washington. But we'll check the penalty marker. It's going to go against the Owls. And more flags after the play. A little extracurricular. I think that might be a taunting penalty. And there are still people yapping at each other. Well, you know, they've been hanging around each other most of the week. And that was Hull taking a shot at uh, Cal. During the play, holding number 75 on the offense. Ten yards from the previous spot. First down. After the play, Unsportsmanlike conduct, number one on the offense. An additional 15 yards will be added. First down. Wow. That's costly. Holly? Well, Mario Hull had been talking a lot to Washington way before that play. Actually, that one of the side judges had already come over and warned him to knock it off. So when Washington made the play, deflected the ball out of Hull's hand, Washington went right over and said something to Hull about it. Hull retaliated and got the flag. That had been brewing for a couple of plays. Mm. Good stuff, Holly. So from the 8 out to the 34-yard line for Rice, and it's still end goal. Talk about selfish acts that hurt your team. Taunting after the play. Yeah. Dreyfus Jackson, 2 for 3 so far on this drive. Timeout time call. Out. Rice. That is their first time out of the half. There were a lot of check with me's going on there. They decided they needed to check a this little more a during the timeout. Couldn't figure it out. Young Bulldog fan enjoying Christmas Eve here in Honolulu. So after being down with uh, first and goal at the eight yard line, penalties have driven the uh, Owls back to the 34. And here we are with first and forever to get to the end zone. Sunday, Sunday. 
Dreyfus Jackson, the quarterback, to throw. Cutting in to the center. Nice grab down to the 20-yard line. Nine Zach Wright on the reception for 17 yards for Rice. Ron Smith making the knockdown for the Bulldogs. Well, you'll notice that at the last minute, they moved over their safety to the middle of the field and took away the hole that was there. But Jackson went ahead and threw the ball a little short of where the free safety was, and they got a nice gain out of it. They're still alive with a chance to get to the end zone. Scoring first has been big for both of these teams and their success in this uh, 2014 season. From the 17, Jackson to bring it back himself. Got some room up the center. Still going inside the five-yard line. Finally tagged and knocked down by Carl Mickelson, a 13-yard gain. And it brings up third down. Now from the four-yard line for the Owls. Yeah, they've come all the way back from being at, what, the 34. Yep. After having first and goal of the eight. Where, where do you go now? You've got Taylor in the slot. Derek Dillard is the uh, running back. That's a, good, that's a good matchup with Taylor in the slot there. Looking in the corner and off the hands of Mario Hall. It falls incomplete. Brings up fourth down. And they went after the freshman Malcolm Washington, number 20 over there in single coverage. A fade route, but a good job by Washington of really pressing, forcing Hull all the way to the edge there. Announcers hate that. So James Hairston is in, the senior graduate transfer from LSU to try a 21-yard field goal. And the Owls get on the board first. They get the three points, but might be left to wonder what might have been when first the holding penalty and then the unsportsmanlike set them way back. Christmas Eve in Hawaii. My first experience here. It's a beautiful spot. Yeah, how, how are you uh, handling this warm Christmas weather? Well, I live in South Florida, so that's kind oh, of so you're fine with yeah, that. Okay. Yeah. This is nothing new for you. Then. Uh, it's a beautiful setting for a uh, Christmas Eve bowl game. And nice 11-play, 71-yard drive by the Rice Owls. Gets them three in the first lead in the game. Fresno State to get its first shot at the ball. Damari Scott, eight, looking to pick up the kick on the bounce. He does at the eight-yard line. Wrapped up at the 25 by Dennis Parks for the Owls. So the Fresno State Bulldogs led by quarterback Brian Burrell. Yeah, I feel for him. You know, he's had a solid year, but he's replacing perhaps the best quarterback Fresno State's ever had in Derek Carr. Yeah. Not easy to do. And Carr's playing for the Oakland Raiders now. And so everyone has the, the highest expectations. And he is such a perfectionist. He's so hard on, him, on himself. His coach said that even when he throws a touchdown pass, he has to tell him, celebrate. That's a good thing. Relax. <laughs> Enjoy it. From their 26, handoff to Martez Waller. Looking for the edge. Far side. Contained, wrapped up, and dropped for no gain. In fact, might have lost one on their first play. Franklin American Mortgage brings us the keys to the game for the Bulldogs. Yeah, well, Fresno State has to go the one-two punch. Waller and Harper by air and by sea. They've got that. Aaron Lamb, I'm sorry. And uh, Burrell, we talked about him. Tough deal. They've got to protect him. 36 sacks already. And defensively, this has got to be a factor. Burrell to throw, looking down inside for the screen. Juggling, finally pulling it in. But dropped for very little gain is uh, Waller. Hit there by James Radcliffe and Alex Lyons for the Owls. It sets up early a third down and long. Yeah, this is the problem. You get... Rice going to their sixth defensive back set. They've got a front four, a couple of defensive ends who love to get after the quarterback. They have a lot of sacks on the season. So now they'll be coming after Burrell. Top of the screen, the front receiver in the two receiver stack is Josh Harper, the senior leading receiver for the Bulldogs. Burrell under pressure. Drop for a loss. There is a flag down on the field, back in the defensive backfield.
Our referee today is Tony Beckert, wrapping up a 40-year career officiating football. His final game today before he retires. Holding. Number 22 on the defense. Ten yards from the previous spot. First down. Ouch. We talked about third down and pressure. Rice doesn't blitz an awful lot, but everything comes over here. You'll see them bring five guys to get in there and create some havoc. They normally only bring four, but they bring five this time, and that's a problem for Fresno State. As we mentioned, they've given up 36 sacks on the season. There's another one. So the penalty on Ryan Pollard gives a first down for the Bulldogs. They've uh, whistled play stopped for a moment. So if Rice is going to change their tendency and blitz more, that's an added factor that Fresno State probably wasn't anticipating having to deal with today. From the 37, the fresh set of downs for Fresno State. Well, hands off, it's Waller. Nothing doing there, couldn't get the edge on the right side. In fact, lost at least one, maybe two on that run. Nice wrap up by Brian Nordstrom. Part of that uh, defensive end bookend for the Rice Owls who have been so effective this season. Not the biggest defensive end, so folks always try to run at him, but he's very quick and beats some of those tackles to the inside. Add to that tackle for loss total for Nordstrom. So second and 11. No running room whatsoever for Waller. Julius White got into the backfield for the Owls. That's a six-yard loss. Yeah, they're, they're blowing things up right now. We talked about the quickness on the edge. We talked about Nordstrom, and now he's quick to the inside. Well, he's not alone. Zach Pat on the other side does the same thing. So once again, you've got the third and long. Tough situation for Burrell. He's got 16 picks on the season. That's the offensive coordinator for the Bulldogs, Dave Schramm. His team now facing a third and 16. Burrell dumps it underneath, knocked away. Waller, the intended receiver. And a nice break up there by the player who got the penalty earlier in the drive, Ryan Pollard. Yeah, Pollard just sitting on this. He was waiting for this, just reading the eyes of Brian Burrell and driving on that, making a nice play. So advantage Rice really defensively being dominant on first down and creating second and long, third and long, and putting a lot of pressure on Brian Burrell. So the punter is Garrett Swanson for the Bulldogs. Bryce Callahan picks it up. About his 32-yard line, looking for some room. Finally walloped down on the far side, just shy of the 40. So nothing for the Bulldogs on their first effort. Second possession for Rice coming up in the Hawaii Bowl. Their own 39-yard line. They've been really good so far, but for the penalties, Rice has really dominated this thing. Dreyfus Jackson, the junior quarterback and first-year starter, three for five on his throwing. On the first set of downs, plus two runs. He'll pitch to Luke Turner, who will option down the sideline to Mario Hall. <laughs> and the ball falls incomplete. Dalen Jones, number five, the defender for the Bulldogs. No laundry is on the field. Well, number one thing in bowl practice is make sure you guys have fun putting trick plays. And they had it. I mean, Turner had Hull out there. One of the few times we've seen Turner underthrow. Yeah. What has he got? Four, five touchdown passes? Yeah, four. All on the option. Yeah. And he just underthrew that when he had Hull out there. So second and 10 for the Owls. Derek Dillard, 32. The other of the tandem running backs for Rice is the uh, setback. Jackson looking down the center to Jordan Taylor. Taylor across midfield, down to the 44-yard line with a 17-yard pickup. Yeah, you know, they're working the middle of the field because Fresno State's playing a two-deep coverage. So that area behind the linebackers and in front of the safeties is open. Taylor, the six foot five senior, and the leading playmaker for this team the last two years. Missed a few games, injured earlier this season. He is the team leader in receptions with six touchdown passes on the year. Hey. 
handoff to Juwan Davis. Not much going there. You know why? You know whose neighborhood that is? Has to be 92. Yeah. Yeah, Tyler Davidson is in there, and he's he's a big-time player. If you're going to run inside, you have to get two guys to try and move him out of the way. Because even when he doesn't make the tackle, he creates a huge pileup. But look at the way he blew that thing up. He's in the backfield, takes on two guys, and he just blows up the play. Six foot two, 309 pound senior out of Scottsdale, Arizona. I watch tape on him, and he reminds me of Vince Wilfork for the Patriots. Oh, really? Taking huh. on Good the double comparison. team block. And Good comparison. Flogging up that center. South Florida guy going with the Patriots. I like it. Uh, originally in the wing leader. Uh -huh. Just so you know. <laughs> Truth comes out. Yep. Jackson to throw outside, and it didn't look like he and Mario Hull were on the same page when that one. Hull zigged, and Jackson expected the zag. So a third and long here for the Owls. Don't expect pressure from Flor uh, Fresno State in third and long situations. That's really not their personality. They tend to play more coverage. They may show blitz, but they really don't often bring it in this situation. Jackson looking, looking, now gonna run. Still going. He's close. They're gonna mark him just short, but what an effort by Dreyfus Jackson to zig and zag his way up for eight yards on that carry. I think he ran 35 to get eight here, and they're going right for it. They're going right after it right now. Oh, no, no, he's down. Fumbled snap. The ball came up. It dropped out of the quarterback's hands. He touched the knee to the ground when he bent down to get it, and that's going to turn the ball over on downs for the Owls. The quarterback possessed the ball while his knee touched the ground. Result of the play is a first down, Fresno State. Well, they tried to catch Fresno State off guard by going for it on fourth down in a hurry, and sometimes you go so fast that you don't take care of the little details yourself. Now, that wasn't a bad snap. It came up right to him. Looks like he wasn't ready for it. And then he went down to his knee, and the ball's dead right there. That's it. So the ball goes over on downs. And Fresno State takes over, first and 10, at its own 37-yard line. David Bailiff was hot after that one. And Fresno State hasn't been able to find its rushing attack. Five running plays, only one has picked up positive yardage. Whistles, and David Bailiff is still stomping mad on that right sideline. He's got to be careful. He's pretty far out there on the field. Timeout, Rice. Rice's coach is challenging that Fresno State played the last play with 12 players. Ah, there we go. He's saying caught him off guard, and they couldn't get their guys off the field. Now, I can say this from being in our meetings with David Bailiff yesterday. I would not want him mad at me. <laughs> He's a big man. Yeah, right right there. There's the That's there's one. There's another one. So he's saying that well, that might have been 13. Even if one got off. <laughs> saying the 12th didn't get up. There's one now. Here comes the next one. Not off the field. That had to be seen from the booth. The assistant coach is up there pointing that one out. So our uh, referee, Tony Becker, listening to the call from upstairs. The replay official for today is uh, Bob Cusera, and he's having a look. It's big. It's a big moment in the game. You swing that over on a penalty to first down Rice. Yeah, the difference is first down in Fresno State territory and Fresno State having the ball. I don't know that I've ever seen a challenge on a play like too many men on the field. It doesn't quickly come to mind as the normal review, reviewable play. There was one um, uh, the other night in Montgomery 
in uh, the bowl game that we had from there. They had a, a, a challenge late, coach challenged, that there were too many men on the field on the other side, and the call went for him mm -hmm. and, uh, and was a swinging momentum at the time. Yeah. Well, did he get off the field? Time up. You keep your eyes on the snap. And as you see, Davison rushing off the field. Ball is snapped, and he is still on the field. He's barely beyond the numbers there. I'm counting them up. I had 13. Uh, then one got off the field, but yep. Davison didn't. Yep. Yep. I think that's 12. If my math is correct. Most now, well, Mr. Stanford, I would hope. <laughs> <laughs> so now the question becomes, if they do overturn it, uh, checking out where the spot of the ball exactly. is. That's and, why this yeah. is taking so long. I, I, I think they're going to overturn this based on the numbers that we saw there. The guys running off the field. And they're trying to find exactly where the ball was spotted. Then you mark off. All right, see what we can count here. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah. I don't know about you, partner, but I'm thinking this is taking a way bit too long. A well, little bit long. Uh, remembering a couple of things, that the, the, the angles the replay officials see are not necessarily exactly what we're seeing. And I understand that. And let's see. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Rice will be charged with their second timeout, and they have lost their challenge for the remainder of the game. So, you know, when Davison ran off the field, as you were counting them up, our, our math is wrong. Davison was the 11th guy coming off the field. So they played with 10 guys. They didn't play with 12. All right, so Fresno State takes over the ball. The turnover on downs, the lost challenge opportunity. And now from the 37-yard line, Brian Burrell goes to work for his second opportunity. Waller, positive yardage on that one. All right, let's count them. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I count that as number eleven right there coming off the field. We had twelve before coming off. So Waller with the handoff again. Not much going there on that far side. Wrapped up for no gain by James Ratcliffe. And uh, just like that, it's going to bring up a third down for the Bulldogs. Well, this may be the, the best third down situation they've had. They've been in third and long, and this is a, a third and six. This is their best opportunity on third down. Here's something defensive coordinator for Rice, Chris Thurman, told us. Expect an empty backfield on third and long for Fresno State. The quick throw. Did he get there? Where's the spot? It will be first down yardage for Josh Harper. His first touch of the game. Uh, Josh Harper sighting. And they will go fast. They like to go fast. So again, the empty backfield. <laughs> down goes the quarterback. Flag is also down on the field. Brian Nordstrom through, but we'll see if it stands. Nordstrom's having a day already. Offsides, number 18 on the defense. Five yards from the previous spot. Repeat first down. So that's the second sack that's been wiped out because of a penalty. Mm. We've seen some pretty key ones already in this one. Four penalties for 40 yards on the uh, Rice Owl so far, and we're still just in the first quarter. So across midfield for Fresno State. At the 47-yard line, Burrell with a handoff. It's Josh Cusana, the second of their running back tandem. 
And as Brian Nordstrom again on the play, we talked about his quickness. Look how quickly he closes down and chases this play down from the backside. Wow. He, he's just a relentless player out there. The junior from the Woodlands, Texas, former walk-on. Started every single game in 2014 for the Owls. That's a 19 tackles for loss this season. Zotto. And Burrell on the quarterback keeper there going far side. Gain of three. Going to bring up a third and short for the Bulldogs. Defenders still moving around as the ball was snapped. Kizana through into the secondary. And inside the 25-yard line, a big run and a big first down pickup. 20 yards there for the Bulldogs. Uh, what a job that their center, Bo Bonheim, did. Just look in the center of your screen. You see the double team with Bonheim, number 60, throwing a great block. Bulldogs go quickly. Kizana can't get to the outside this time. With a hand inside the other defensive end, Zach Pat with first contact, and that's a two-yard loss for Fresno State. Well, so far, Fresno State has done a good job of protecting Burrell in the sense that he hasn't had to make a lot of difficult throws, and they've been bailed out with penalties on the sack, but he's going to have to make plays in the passing game to slow down that rush. Pressure coming. Burrell gets it off in the direction of Kazada. Falls incomplete. And it'll bring up third and long. I like the decision he made. Checking it down. Just a little bit behind Kazada. But that was a good decision to, to drop it down there and come back and play third down. So playing from behind the chains here with the third down and 12 yards. They need the 14-yard line to get a fresh set of downs. Josh Hopper is up there. That's their, their key receiver. How do they play him? Ball dropped short of the intended receiver down the center of the field, Greg Watson, and it brings up fourth down for the Bulldogs. Well, Burrell did not look Harper's way. You see there's banks underneath them and a safety over the top out of your frame. Not surprisingly, Harper's drawing a lot of attention. So the kicker, Cody Kronig, is on. Going to be a 44-yard attempt. He's one for two from that distance this season. Got it. And a tie ball game. Cody Kronig, the freshman walk-on from San Jose, California. Ties the game for the Bulldogs. And a reminder that Capital One Bowl Mania continues on Saturday. Cincinnati and Virginia Tech in the Military Bowl. Presented by Northrop Grumman at 1 Eastern on ESPN. And then Miami and South Carolina in the Duck Commander Independence Bowl. That's on ABC at 3.30 Eastern time. The ball coach and the U. <laughs> Love Bowie. Love Bowie. That's just awesome. Brad Kai has been impressive this season, hasn't he, the Miami quarterback? Yeah. You know, I think Miami has a chance to be uh, a special team, a bounce-back team next season. Look across at beautiful Diamond Head on a wonderful Christmas Eve day. Here did you run Hollywood. Diamond Head while you were here? I did not run it. I ran in the vicinity of it. Hmm. The elevation was um, not something my knees decided they wanted. <laughs> <laughs> it was a great, great place to go jogging along the Waikiki oceanfront. Yeah. Beautiful place. Those, 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 those buildings yeah. on the end of the point there, they're about two miles from our hotel. Oh, perfect running distance. It was huh? just about. Out and back. So 3-3, Fresno State with a nice scoring drive to tie the ball game. You know, it's interesting. We, we expected a lot of offensive activity, and the teams have moved the ball, but penalties have really altered scoring opportunities so far. Cody Cronin to kick off. That is Derek Dillard on the carry for the Owls. And 
he gets them just outside their 20-yard line where they'll take over. What a great bowl week it is for the players and the group surrounding Fresno State and Rice. See, every time you talk about limiting or taking away bowl games, this is some of the stuff you take away from players. And this stuff is cool. <laughs> I mean, I enjoyed it when I had that experience, and I tell you, 20 years after you're done playing and you get together with your old teammates, you talk about this stuff. Remember that bowl game? Remember, uh-oh, did we break curfew? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All of the Rice players that I encountered in the elevators, we were staying at the same hotel as they were here this week. I asked every one of them every time, you know, are you having a good time? And the answer was a resounding yes. What a great trip this has been. What's not to like about Hawaii? Absolutely. Now the Owls with the ball at their 22-yard line. Dreyfus Jackson with the handoff to Juwan Davis. Looking for some room, get some on the outside. Nice run, nice game there for Davis, the uh, sophomore from Sealy, Texas. Trying to get himself to the 1,000-yard marker for the season. Came into the game needing 90. He's got 31 so far. So a second and short here for the Owls. We heard a lot about possible trick plays from these teams in our meetings with them. Got one already. Didn't work. <laughs> Could have. Nothing trick about that. No running room there for Davis. Claudel Lewis wraps him up and drops him. And it's going to set up third and about two for the Owls. Taking a shot down the field. Dennis Parks wrapped up and dragged down inside the 20 yard line on third down and two. They bring the ball all the way inside the 20 the other way. Well, good read by Jackson because he looks over to the right side and realizes that they're playing zone on the three receiver side. And then he knows he's got that single matchup on the other side with Washington and takes advantage of it. From the 17, Rifus Jackson, not much running room around the right side. How about a 53-yard connection on third and two? Yeah, you, just a quick glance to the right side. He saw the three receivers being zone covered. He knew he had Washington singled up with Parks and went right after him. Good decision. Parks, the junior psychology major, with a big catch. Now Jackson looking toward the end zone. Touchdown, Jordan Taylor. Nice throw. Got an owl down on the field. Number 71 has an outstanding as a covered up number. He is now wearing number 89. That is Matt Simonette, the uh, senior center and team captain for the Owls, who's down. What a heck of a throw as you see Taylor running that little post and a couple of Fresno State <laughs> defenders getting a little confused and running into each other. And you see the concern by the uh, Owls for their captain, Simonette, former walk-on, who's been playing with a right arm injury that's heavily bandaged. Yeah, he's, he's had a couple of issues with his arm, but right now they seem to be working on his lower body. He's right in the middle, number 60. You see him right there, and he kind of came up grabbing that right leg.
I hate to see that in a senior's last game. Yeah, he, he's overcome an awful lot. He had an arm injury last year that uh, left a really ugly scar. Plays with a heavy bandage on that right arm. You can see that. And he's been really effective, as you mentioned. Walked on. So we'll uh, hope the best and get an update on Matt Simonette when possible. First, the point after try. For James Hairston. Missed it. Wide right. So a very quick down the field march by the Owls. Five plays, 78 yards, less than two minutes, but the missed point after try, and it's a 9-3 game uh, with 23 seconds left in the quarter. You know, we, we talk about bowl games and the importance of bowl games. I remember last year seeing Rice actually doing the Rice game at the Liberty Bowl with Mississippi State. Mm -hmm. And Mississippi State blew him out. Dak Prescott was just phenomenal. And that game was the beginning of what Mississippi State became this season. And Prescott announced himself as a guy who was ready to, to ascend to the national stage. I think Rice believes that they can do the same thing next year. That their team, the young team, the quarterback in his first year, now get this under their belt. If they have a good game today, and they're off to a good start, that they would be in position next year to have a great season. I've heard said more times in this last month or so since the end of the regular season, if you will, what value the extra 21 days of practice is for teams to develop their young players. Huge, because, you know, when you're in the season, you can't rep the young guys, the guys who are redshirting like, but now you get this extra time, you get folks squared away, you find out how much they've grown, how much they've developed. It's, it's extra rep. It, it, re it really, really helps. Maybe a little anger on that kick from Hairston. <laughs> Boots it out of the end zone. And Fresno State will take over after the touchback. A look at the latest dish presented by Dish Network. College football playoff semifinals on New Year's Day. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. New Year's Six, New Year's Eve, New Year's Day. Kind of going back to the way it was when we were growing up. When January 1, you just sit there and you go, how's this going to turn out? Who's going to be left standing at the end of the day? And now we've got that back again. I think it's pretty cool. At some point, I want to get your opinion on both of those matchups, Oregon and Florida State and Alabama and Ohio you know, State. I, I don't often share my opinions. <laughs> I'm shy about that. Yeah. Fresno State takes over at its 25. Burrell looking downfield in the direction of Harper. Kick off. Intercepted by J.T. Pleasant game for the Owls. Harper was never open. Blazing game had this right from the start. Had a lot of cushion, never gave the cushion up, and he looked like the receiver out there. He was in such great shape. Clearly a go route. He was laying off, expecting. Look at great position. Had Harper to the outside. He's inside of him. Got him blocked off. And what great ball skills, great ball hands there coming up with that, that pick been such a huge story on the season for Fresno State that the 17th interception on Burrell this season so Rice takes over on its own 31 yard line with 15 seconds to go in the quarter Andrew Roya now slides over to the center position 77 for the Owls Jackson looking again downfield Nice adjustment by Mario Hall. Can he go to the house? Touchdown, Owls. That's making him pay for the turnover. Oh, man, just a stutter and go. And they are really working on Washington, the freshman. When they get Hall out there on him, they keep trying to challenge a youngster who's stepped in and is playing a bigger role the last couple of weeks how open he was there and had come come back to that ball made a great adjustment great great catch Paul the uh, senior out of Altair Texas with a touchdown grab the point after try this time is good 69 yards man he aired that one out and what a great catch by by Hull coming back for it but they really are working on the youngster Malcolm Washington over there and 
adjustment's going to be really to give him a little help because every time they see him in single coverage, they've gone over there and tried to attack him and have come up with a couple of big plays. And for uh, Dreyfus Jackson, seven for 10, two touchdowns and 187 yards of passing already, the Rice Jr. quarterback. And we're just coming to the end of the first quarter. And think about this. In the last four offensive plays for Rice, 139 yards mm -hmm. and two touchdowns <laughs> in four plays. How about Mr. Jackson? Yeah. I mean, he's, he's been airing it out. And I don't know that he's thrown the deep ball as well the last several weeks as he has today. And in fact, the Fresno State folks weren't convinced that they'd see any deep shots, but look at what he's done. 195 yards through the air. They're just dominating Fresno State right now. Squid kick down the center. Picked up by Damari Scott. Oof. Dropped at the 30-yard line by Dennis Parks, number four for the Owls. Exclamation point on the end of the first quarter. Maybe I should say three exclamation points. <laughs> the hit on the kickoff return being the third of them. Here's the first, the interception of the Burrell pass. And then the 69-yard connection from Dreyfus Jackson to Mario Hall for the touchdown. Track him all night. <laughs> I want to make sure that, uh, well, you should make sure when you're flying, that you don't, uh, I'll get you a don't lump. interfere with him. I get a lump of coal, so it's okay. <laughs> Christmas Eve in Honolulu, and the Fresno State Bulldogs with some work to do. Trailing 16-3 to to Rice. They try the end around and get nothing for it. Maybe one. Dylan Root took the carry. He was stopped in the backfield by Brian Nordstrom and Julius White for the Owls. Off coming this way, Martez Waller with again not much going for him. Julius White again on the stop, bottled up there. You know, seeing all the beautiful scenes and all the fun things that the teams do here uh, on this bowl trip to Hawaii, getting your team focused and ready to play can be a concern for a coach. And David Bailiff wanted some advice before he came out here. Talk to June Jones, and uh, June coached here a long time and brought his SMU team in here a couple years ago and really beat up on Fresno State. What about change for the Bulldogs? Brandon Connett in and hands off. Nothing much for Waller, and that'll bring up fourth down for the Bulldogs. Holly's got more on uh, David Bailiff and June Jones. Well, Bailiff had not been to Hawaii, so he got some great advice. June Jones gave him some unusual advice. Hey, don't let your players go into too big of waves. Their body gets fatigued fighting off that surf. If they do go into the ocean, make sure they wear shoes so their feet don't get cut with coral and then they can't play in the game. And most importantly, lots of sunscreen. Players have come over here and gotten so sunburned they couldn't put their shoulder pads on. And Rice followed all these. We didn't lose a single kid to a Hawaii-related problem. <laughs> and they've certainly come out with a lot of intensity through the first quarter and change of this game. Garrett Swanson's punt and a fair catch made by the uh, Rice Owls, and they'll go to work on the Scion playbook. Well, the Rice wide receivers are running phenomenal routes, and they're getting them touchdowns. Just take a look here. Here's Jordan Taylor in the slot. Watch the way he handles these two defenders with a little hesitation over the middle. They don't know what he's going to do. He slips into the end zone for six. That works pretty well. And then Mario Hall, single up one-on-one. -on -one. Watch him use hesitation to make Washington stop his back pedal. Gets the pause, blows by him. Nicely thrown ball, catch and run. The Rice receivers are running great routes right now. And getting connected very well, efficiently, by their quarterback, Dreyfus Jackson, who is back out to lead the Owls again with a first and 10. This time starting at their 23-yard line. Handoff <laughs> coming this way, Darian Pollard. Not much there, maybe two for the Owls. Looks like, like Matt Simonette is 
back in the ball game for Rice, the center who limped off the field earlier, number 60. It's good to see him back on the field. Yep. Let's see how Fresno State adjusts, adjusts defensively. And they've given up some plays down the field. They need to help Washington a little bit on the corner. And they have to stop the perimeter runs. Those are the two things that have been issues for their defense. Ron Davis. Once, hit twice, still going, hit a third time, hit a fourth time. Finally, the fourth one was the one that brought him down. A lot of action there, but not a lot of yardage for Juwan Davis. Well, that missile that came in there, I think, was... That sounded bad. That missile was uh, Deron Smith, number 13, the free safety. NFL prospect, but Davis just bounced right off of him. So third down and seven. They need the 33. Short throw from Jackson in the direction of Mario Hall. It'll bring up fourth down and a much needed stop by the Bulldog defense. Yeah, they, they needed that, considering how they've, they've struggled. Struggled in that first quarter, starting the second quarter with the stop. It's huge for them, helps your confidence. First, now they've got to put something together offensively. First time today we've seen the Rice punter, other than holding extra point attempts. James Faramon, the junior from San Antonio to kick. Deron Smith is back to field the punt for Fresno State. Their catch signal in brought in at his 26-yard line. 49-yard kick for Faramon. I'm told that means, no? did you know that that marina we just showed there was where the opening to Gilligan's Island was shot? Huh. The scene of the SS really? Minnow sailing for the three-hour tour? Just sit right back and you hear a tale. That's right. Brings you the age-old question, Ginger or Marianne? <laughs> now that must be a sight to be up on that ultralight. Fresno State looking to make some things happen. Ryan Burrell back in at quarterback with the outside throw. Greg Watson the target. Nice gain on first down. Give him about seven and set up second and short for the Bulldogs. Well, Harper has been kind of taken out of this game. They haven't been able to really get him involved. Waller hasn't been able to get going. Burrell again throws. This time his big tight end, Chad Olson. And good enough for first down for the Bulldogs. Holly? Before they took the field for this series, he has had a sense of urgency because they have not won a bowl game under his direction. He changed everything. They had harder practices, more full contact practices here at the island. He wants them to get a bowl win. Big hole up the middle. Nice running from Josh Cozada. And a big gain into Rice territory down to the 39-yard line. Kazada gets overlooked an awful lot. He had almost 500 yards rushing, transferred over from BYU. And, and he can do some things that Waller can't, particularly in the passing game, catching the ball out of the backfield. How can you overlook that Palomalu-like hair? <laughs> Pressure on Burrell, throws it away. Nice run into the uh, backfield by Dylan Clare, 96, the big senior for the uh, Owls. You know, Fresno State needs someone to help out and make a play because right now Harper has been really kind of negated by Rice. Waller hasn't been able to get on track, so maybe, maybe it's Cazada who's the guy that can make some runs and catch the ball out of the backfield and give them a spark. Three targets for Harper, but just the one reception. Here's Cazada again. Squeezes through a hole in the middle. Then he gets wrapped in the defensive backfield. Jalen Finner, 25 for the Owls with the stop. And it'll bring up another one of those third down and six or sevens that, uh, that Rice was hoping to get Fresno State into. Yeah, and, and Kazada came out, lost his shoe. He's got 43 yards. The rest of the team has 29, so get the shoe back on him. They need the 29 here for a fresh set of downs. Four for nine for 21 yards and one interception for Burrell. The pump, the throw, hit as he throws. Knocked down on the pass defense. 22 for Rice. 
Ryan Pollard, and it'll bring up fourth down again for the Bulldogs. I tell you, Brian Nordstrom is, is having a game. I mean, he has been in that backfield. He's had a couple sacks taken away because of penalties, but he's been living in the Fresno State backfield. You see why that play didn't give him much on a fourth down gamble here now. The Bulldogs line up to go for it. Empty backfield. Need the 29-yard line. Burrell throws off the hands of the intended receiver, Aaron Pack. There is a flag. And that could be some extra life that the Bulldogs need to keep this drive alive. Yeah, they were looking at Ryan Pollard, 22, when they threw the flag. Holding. Number 22 on the defense. 10 yards from the previous spot. First down. That's the second time in the game that Pollard has had a penalty that's kept the drive alive for the Bulldogs. Well, you see it up at the, the right-hand side. You see him grabbing onto the receiver there. That looked like that was Peck number seven that he grabbed onto. You know, Peck's a big receiver. He's 6'3", 212. So Pollard felt like he needed to grab him to be physical with him. So put the ball down at the Rice 26. And Kazada coming near side. Nice wrap up and drop there by who else? Nordstrom, 47, but a gain of five. Have you seen a guy tackled by the hair? You know, we were, we were talking about that yesterday and the legality of it and all that, and I can't actually recall seeing it, but it's sure out there. It's illegal. Nothing there for Kazada. Inside of the Owl line, 96, Dylan Clare lines him up. Holly, can you advise us on hair, please? Well, I wish I had half as good hair as these Fresno State players. Kazada has gorgeous hair. So does Fafita on the offensive line, number 43 on defense. Oh, my gosh. I asked him to Reuter, do you have a policy on the hair? And he said, the Polynesian kids, it's part of their culture. They can have whatever they want. They want. I'm not talking about hair. Yeah, I, I don't have it. They want a first down here. Ball off the hands of the intended receiver on third and long. It was Greg Watson who was the intended receiver. And the defender, Julius White, there, the safety, sets up another fourth down and brings on the field goal unit. Yeah, and that's the right call. Even though you went for it earlier, I think you got to take the three points. Your kicker has done a nice job today. He's got some confidence going. You can cut it to a 10-point game. And you haven't played great. It's the right thing to do. Cody Kronig made a 44-yarder earlier. This one from 40. Slices it through. So they got something. But still trailing by 10. Gilligan? <laughs> I hope that's not the three-hour tour. <laughs> meeting for Andrew Roy and his family knowing that his grandfather was there helping others try to survive. And Holly, you talk to anyone who has been over to the Pearl Harbor historic sites and they'll tell you what a moving experience that it is and what a must do it is on a trip to Hawaii. Brandon Hamilton takes the kick just outside of his own goal line. Makes the first one miss, gets clobbered by the second one and Rice will start at its own 25-yard line. Last series, Fresno State. A little uh, extracurricular, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes you just see too much of the opposing team during bowl week, and <laughs> you chat a little bit. Exchange phone numbers, pleasantries, merits of your respective schools. Good job by the officials just kind of separating these guys and not throwing a flag there. It's going to be a little bit of chippiness. Just under nine left to go in the second quarter. Ten-point lead for Ryan Ball at their own 25-yard line. Dreyfus Jackson, seven for 11 with two touchdown passes. They've had two big plays. Yeah, the matchup on the bottom is not, not a great one. Handoff to Juwan Davis. Nothing going on the right side. Tries to come back. Nothing doing in the middle. Met and dropped by Adro Adirine, 31, and 43, Carl Mickelson for the Bulldogs. Yeah, well. That was the all-hair stop. You, you know what? You better be able to tackle when you have hair like that, too, because everybody's looking at you. And he, he is a great player. We watched him on tape, and he has range for a linebacker. He is, he is really, really good, particularly in the pass game. And his defensive coordinator, Nick Tolf, told us yesterday, you want to see intensity and emotion in a game? You watch 43 for the Bulldogs. 
Loss of two, second and 12. How much help will they give Washington on the bottom? Jackson bottled up. Dropped again, no gain. 96, Todd Hunt on the stop, and it sets up third and long for Rice. You know, it's still chippy out there. We were watching Hull and Washington go at it. Officials jumped in again and told them to cool it. But there's been a fair amount of chippiness on this field today. They need the 35. Middle's open there. I'm going to close that up. Bring some heat. Jackson throws down the middle off the hands of Jordan Taylor, and it falls incomplete, brings up fourth down. Boy, he had him. You know, Jordan Taylor recognized that they were showing a too high safety look, leaving that middle open. And Taylor worked into that area and just couldn't come up with it. Now, that's the second three and out for Rice, so Fresno State has a chance to get the momentum going. Defense picking up the offense here. Mm -hmm. So Deron Smith is back to field the James Faribon punt. I like Deron Smith. I think he's going to be an NFL player, a safety. Smith standing at his own 37-yard line. Whistles. And going to be five more. The Owls will be set Ball back. Start. Number 18 on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Fourth down. Nothing good comes from penalties and turnovers. Just Foot, a football you, basic, puts, I know. Puts but you in a bad, bad spot. You know, most, most coaches use kind of what, 12% you know, rule, where they look at their plays, and if they are above 12% in penalties and negative plays, yep. they figure they're going to lose. So they try to stay underneath that. So you're right to harp on the penalty. The couple of uh, drops for loss plus the penalty can swing some field position. Drop ball there. Smith tried to feel it with pressure closing in on him. Managed to fall back on it, but still great field position for the Bulldogs to take over at the 42-yard line in the shadows of Pearl Harbor, the Hawaii Bowl. Not again. No, stop him. The band wasn't on the field there, though. <laughs> Good point. Best starting position, uh, field position of the day for the Fresno State Bulldogs. Start at their own 42, get nothing on the run, though. And sets up a second down and 10. So Brian Burrell, the Fresno State quarterback. Needing some connections to his receivers. Almost connected with a Rice defensive back. Things have gotten better as the game has progressed for the Bulldogs, but still need to be better yet. Yeah, you, you know, they've struggled. One drive, 51 yards. The last first four were not so good. And they can't get the ball to Harper. He's doubled. Morrell four for 12 so far. Under pressure here, trying to get away. Got some running room. Across midfield, still going. Morrell inside the 40-yard line. A quarterback his coach is called tough and gritty. He's taken his knocks, learning his lessons this year, but he's also willing to take his lumps running the ball in a 21-yard game. That could be the confidence builder. He is the, he is the third leading rusher, 328 yards on the season. They go quickly, throw is complete, and a nice uh, reach and grab by Greg Watson for the Bulldogs, but short yardage there as the ball was a bit behind him. Yeah, you know, you got to get him comfortable, but you have to get Harper involved. Right now, Harper's lining up as an outside receiver, and it's pretty easy to double him. They're going to have to find a way to move him around, get him free. Morrell keeps on his own read. Doesn't get anywhere much. Wrapped up by Jalen Finner after just a two-yard gain. It'll bring up third down and four for Fresno State. Impressed with the way Rice has tackled pretty cleanly in the open field this ball game. It can be an issue for both for uh, bowl teams for, with the layoff. Coach David Bailiff talked about going back to basics with the long layoff, just like in August when you start practice for the fall schedule. Or who's got it? Who's got it? 
They're going to say Josh Harper's got it. The ball stays with Fresno State and first down yardage. Bryce Callahan, 29 for Rice. And Josh Harper were wrestling the ball, but on the simultaneous possession, it goes to the offensive yeah, player. Like, like baseball. Tie goes to the runner. Bulldogs going quick. Near side, Watson. Tries to get away. Does get away. And then falls down. It'll be a short gain, but Fresno State got something going here with a six-yard gain. I don't want to overlook that play by Callahan almost coming up with that pick. He, he's a really good corner. Really good player. All-conference chance to be a player at the next level. Somebody that uh, Rice is trying to match up on Josh Harper more than they might normally match up a defender against the receiver. Short running yardage inside for Josh Cazotta. David Bailiff said that Callahan has the best man cover skills of any player he's been around. Third and short, Burrell to keep. Hit quickly. Did he get there? Spot dependent. Fourth down. I don't think he got it. Nope. So the first trip inside the red zone today for Fresno State. Sets him up with a fourth down, trailing by 10. Got to go. No hesitation on Tim DeRuiter's part. We don't have to go, but I understand it. The throw near side, Watson hit and wrapped up and dropped. There's Callahan on the stop, and the ball goes over to the Owls on downs. And the other thinking on that is if you kick the field goal, you've made it a one-possession game. And you keep a little momentum. I understand why he wanted to go for this. I'm not crazy about the play selection. Yeah. There was no fool in Callahan on that one. Well, you know, when you need to get one or two yards, it's never a good thing to go backwards. And you do that little bubble screen, you're sending your guy back, and you've got two defenders out there. I'm, I'm not crazy about that call. I, mean, I understand why he went. I don't like that call, but yeah. me personally, I, I probably would have kicked the field goal in maybe a one-possession game, and as poorly as you've played, you'd be in a one-possession situation. So on their first trip inside the red zone, nothing on the day for Fresno State. A little trickery here, two quarterbacks on the field. The throw. Yep, for uh, Jackson out to Jordan Taylor. He'll have to come out of the game for a play as that helmet came off. But an eight-yard pickup on first down. Sunshine. They call him Sunshine. Brandon Hamilton is set back now next to Dreyfus Jackson. Second and short. Nobody fooled on that one. Jackson on the keeper gets nothing. Knocked down in the backfield by Todd Hunt, the 6'3", 263-pound junior who started all games in 2014 for the Bulldogs. And it sets up a third and short. Well, they can run it again, but you just can't go anywhere near 92, Davison. Davison, the nose guard, lined up across from center, Matt Simonette. Here we go, third and one. sees the pressure coming off his right side. It probably changes something going to his left. Missiles. Don't think they got it off before the play clock ran out. Wow. Ah, uh, got the timeout that call. That is their third and final timeout of the half. Now, Rice trying to avoid... Second timeout. Rice trying to avoid a third straight three and out. Looking back on this first half so far, Rod, the Owls certainly started the game with more intensity and urgency. As you look at the co-offensive coordinator, Larry Edmondson, up in the, uh, the booth alongside us. Yeah, I think, I think he has reason to feel really good about what they've done. They've really kind of handled Davidson inside. They've made a few poor decisions to run in his direction at times, and I don't think you can run his way on a third and one. There's the co-offensive coordinator. Billy Lynch down on the sidelines. They actually started the season in opposite positions. Lynch up in the booth and Edmondson down on the sidelines. Got to halftime of the Hawaii game on the November 29th and decided to switch positions and found out that worked much better for them. But what, being in a room with those two guys, 
<laughs> I just got to, okay, co-coordinators. They're like a married How couple. That they work? finish yeah. each other's sentences. It really was fascinating. So after the timeout, still the third and short for the Owls. That's the handoff. Hamilton grinding for first down yardage. Brandon Hamilton gets the carry and gets it done for the Owls and a fresh set of downs. Now we were talking about hair, Jordan Taylor. Yep. He doesn't have the same kind of hair like the Polynesians, but that, that look, that earned him the name, nickname Sunshine <laughs> after the character in the movie Remember the Titans, you know, the Bruce of California quarterback. Uh -huh. Juan Davis back in, looking for the edge. Nice job of contain there. 90 Claudel Lewis was the first one to slow him down. Oh, long hair, longer hair wins. Carl Mickelson made the stop after Lewis slowed him down. Watch 90 here. Yeah, he made that play. He took away the edge, and then Mickelson gets to come in and clean it up. Should mention that Fresno State's been a little bit shorthanded today. Had some defensive players suspended just before the bowl game. More on that after this. Rifus Jackson throws near his side. Mario Hall and he not on the same page and incomplete. Uh, Maurice Poyadu, uh, defensive end, along with linebackers Xavier Ulutu and Michael Lazarus and wide receiver Miles Carr were suspended for this game, a violation of athletic department policy. And so Fresno State a little bit thin up front, particularly with the loss of Poyadu, who was the starting defensive end. Yeah, they, they didn't want to disclose what the athletic department rule violation was, and we didn't want to pry. But the coaches went to great lengths to make it clear that it was nothing of a criminal nature. Tim DeLuter said, we have standards, we have policies, everybody knows clearly what they are, and they clearly know what the consequences will be if we're violating them. Third down and very long, and the short dump inside, and a timeout called by Fresno State to try and save a little time here, down to uh, less than a minute and a half. I don't want to bring up a sore spot, but if you kick the field goal with your hot kicker going two for two already, uh -huh. you get a stop here, you're down seven, one possession. I'm just saying. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to be, you know, Mr. Bad Vibe, but, I'm, you know. I'm, I'm guessing... Just like thinking about that, uh, the two-point conversion at the end of the Popeye's Bahamas Bowl <laughs> earlier oh, today. Yeah. Uh -huh. If you make it, you're the hero. If you don't, you second guess. Oh, yeah. So here we are on the second guessing end of uh, Tim DeRuiter after not kicking the field goal earlier on their first trip inside the red zone. A fair point, though. You know, fair point to think about going for it, but a fair discussion point as to, yep. you know, I, I, whether you pull yourself closer. I absolutely agree with your thought about not liking the play selection, though. When you need a yard or two and you don't throw go back backwards to start, that's... Don't go backwards. That's the wrong direction. Look at the punt formation here. Uh, it's going to set him back five more. Top of the screen. False start. Number 18 on the offense. Five yard penalty. Remains fourth down. So that's the seventh penalty on Rice in this first half mm. versus none on Fresno State. And they're ahead by 10. I think if you want to compare stats and say what was more critical, the, uh, the passing percentage and the total offense for the Bulldogs is the one you're going to look at to tell the story of this first half. Farriman's kick. They're caught at the 38-yard line by Duran Smith, and that's where the Bulldogs will take over. Of course, this Christmas Eve, tomorrow, the most wonderful day of the year. Tips off with the Wizards and Knicks at noon on ESPN, then over on ABC, NBA Countdown at 2, followed by Thunder and Spurs. And finally, LeBron's return to Miami. Cavs and Heat, 5 Eastern, Christmas Day, the NBA. Well, Dwayne Wade said that uh, LeBron should get a standing ovation. I think he's right. Yeah. I mean, he... <laughs> Brought some championships there, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the way the way it always worked. Uh, I'm a I'm a, a Red Sox guy. 
Mm -hmm. So when guys leave and go play for the Yankees, the way it works is their first at bat, you give them a stand and O, and then you boo the daylight out of them <laughs> after that. Pharrell to run, gets away from the pressure across midfield and slides down at the 44-yard line. Well, that's been working for him, hasn't it? He's done a lot with his feet, picking up 19 there, and, and I really believe that's the sort of thing that can give him some confidence. They go quickly. Burrell looking, looking, looking. Now chased down from behind and dropped. And a timeout quickly taken by Fresno State. That's that Fresno State. That is their second timeout of the half. That's one of those sacks. This will be a 30-second timeout. That will go against the offensive line, but that's not on the offensive line. That ball has to come out. Watch how much time Burrell has, and he clutches, 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 resets, clutches. He can only be protected so long. That clock has to go off in your head. He's a young quarterback. It's his first year. You know, Derek Carr was the star last year. It's going to take a little time. It has to be Zach Pat with the sack, 18, one of the sack masters for the Owls. It has to be difficult to replace the guy oh. that set 27 school and 41 conference records. Oh, and, and by the way, he's a starting quarterback in the yeah. NFL. Yeah. <laughs> but that's the job you face. And Brian Burrell here trying to gain what could be some really momentum swinging points if they can find a way to get this final minute and put the ball in the end zone. Near side, throw, complete. Josh Harper wrapped up. Just getting back to the original line of scrimmage. Eight-yard gain there. Everything's contested for Harper. He's got people draped all over him. Just the one timeout left for Fresno State. Throws down to the sideline and couldn't get turned around. Greg Hunt, uh, Greg Watson rather, and the ball falls incomplete. That matchup of Watson and Pollard on the, the outside has been an interesting one to watch. So it brings up fourth down. And it looks like they will bring on the punt team and Garrett Swanson here. And rather than being momentum swinging points, can be a momentum saving stop there for the Rice defense. Bryce Callahan back to get the kick. Going to get knocked out at the one yard line. And with 30 seconds to go, that doesn't leave you a lot of room for the kneel down. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> You've got to be careful. On the kicking team, ball will be placed at the six yard line. First down. Now you've got the room for your kneel down. You mentioned NORAD and Santa Claus <laughs> earlier. And so uh, what about uh, 945 on the East Coast, 1045, whatever it is? I don't know how you guys keep time back there. Uh, yeah, I know. You're, you're a West yeah, Coast. Right? Once I'm out here in, California, in uh, Hawaii, I got no clue. Five hours, so it would be 945. 945. So kids ought to be uh, put down by now on the East Coast. guess that depends how old the kids are. <laughs> 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 All right. So the knee... And uh, the clock running, and Rice is going to take a 10-point lead into the locker room at halftime. Give me your impressions on what you've seen in this first half so far from both teams. Well, I think Fresno State has to find a way to move Harper around to free him up. He's just he's got too much havoc, uh, too much coverage around him. Uh, they got to get Waller involved. I think Jackson played phenomenally well for. Rice getting the ball down the field. So I think right now, Rice has got to be pleased, frustrated that they had a couple opportunities to get away, but good half for Rice. David Bailiff's team leads by 10, Holly. Coach Bailiff, it's Christmas Eve, but your defense does not seem to be in the giving spirit. How did that interception really turn the momentum of this first half? You know, that interception led to some points. I'm, I'm really thrilled with a lot of how we're playing this football game. Not happy with the amount of penalties that we've had. The penalties you know, a lot of times it hasn't been Fresno stopping us, it's been Rice stopping us. We got to get that worked out because a lot of them aren't aggressive penalties, they're just lack of detail. And we've got to, you know, we shouldn't line up off sides. We got a guy jumping on punt coverage. That shouldn't be happening. We played football a long time. These are smart young men. We just got to continue to play hard. I, you know, I'm thrilled how we moved the ball early. We got to get our rhythm back there, but really thrilled how the defense has been just flying around. So, when, when you talk to your team at the half about those penalties, what is it you will say directly? 
we just got to be smarter. You know, like, like I said, they're smart young men, and they're just, we're so excited and amped up to play the game. We did some things that are not characteristic of this football team. All right, get it fixed up. Thanks, Coach. So David Baylor's team leading by 10 at halftime of the 2014 quarter with Rice leading Fresno State by 10. And a comparison of the quarterback play in the first half so far with Brian Burrell on the right and Dreyfus Jackson on the left. And you see the passing yardage difference between the two. Well, big plays by Dreyfus Jackson. He's gotten that done, and we haven't seen Burrell been able to connect with Harper down the field or anyone else to get any big plays. And they got to get him going. It's as simple as that. He, he's got to make some plays down the field. He's got to check down the ball some more and because they're not rushing the ball very well either. Burrell's got 35 yards rushing and 40 yards passing. Yeah, he's, he's the offense right now, legs and a little arm. So they won the toss to start the game and deferred, so the Bulldogs will get the ball to begin the second half. Tim Maruder's team looking to rally and see if they can find a way to take home that Hawaii Bowl trophy. Out of the end zone, they will start at their own 25-yard line as we go downstairs to Holly Rowe. Fresno State coach Tim DeRuder challenged his team to execute better in the locker room at the half. He told his players, hey, remember the mission. It's energy and focus. He does not feel like they've been focused in the first half. He said there are plays to be made in the passing game. Burrell is holding the ball a little bit too long, letting that pressure of the Rice Owls settle in. He said we've just got to go through our progressions, and he's got to make some plays for us. I also did ask him, guys, about not going for that field goal and the points. He said, look, at that point in the game, I thought we had a little momentum. We just needed to make a play, and we didn't, but no second guessing. All right, Holly, thanks. So the Bulldogs, DeRuder's team, start at their own 25-yard line. Burrell with the handoff to Josh Cazada, and he'll get a couple, uh, maybe three, on that first down rush. Brian Nordstrom with the stop for Rice. Well, our, our colleague Trevor Maddich uh, is doing radio. We were chatting at halftime, and we we're trying to figure out where the passes to the running backs have gone. A team that used to throw a lot of screens, or we've seen throw a lot of screens this season. Well, you think about Pizzotta and Waller, 57 catches between them during the season. Now you look at the impact players for today. Not a lot done by Waller and Harper. Harper only three receptions for 19 yards. He had over a thousand yards receiving for the season. So third down and five for Fresno State. And if they're looking to build some momentum, a three and out on the opening possession of the second half would not be a good thing. Pressure on Burrell, hit and dropped. They brought the heat up the middle. Malcolm Hill number two with the safety shuffle into the backfield and drops the quarterback for a loss. Talk about a change in tendency. Rice just doesn't believe in blitzing. They do it here. They feel like they've got something going. They bring Lions on up the middle. They had Malcolm Hill also coming. This is unusual for Rice, but now they're sensing that they can put pressure in third down because the ball's being held as long by the quarterback as Holly mentioned. Offensive coordinator Dave Schramm talking to his quarterback. And Garrett Swanson on to punt. Mario Hall back. Fields it just inside his own 30. And nothing much doing there. And out of bounds, they'll start at their own 30-yard line will the Rice Owls. Talk about pressure. Rice has been bringing it on Burrell. They've gotten there sometimes with four, but more so than any time this season, they've rushed five and sometimes six. Nordstrom has been particularly effective. He's been in there for a number of opportunities for sacks who created them, had a couple taken away with penalties, and then there you see that last pressure by Lyons, a strong side linebacker, coming on a blitz also along with Malcolm Hill. So they're turning up the heat. So Burrell and Schramm and the uh, Bulldog offense left to talk it over while Dreyfus Jackson goes to work as the quarterback for the Rice Owls. Jackson 9 of 15 with two touchdown passes in the first half. And Rice goes to work at its own 30-yard line. Jackson on the keeper, but pursued nicely in the back uh, field. Todd Hunt, 96, makes the initial contact and a gain of just one for Jackson. Heather Aine was also involved in that. Good open field tackle by 
Fresno State. There is Adro. Oh man, he's had shoulder problems all season. They pop out and they pop him back in and he goes back on the field. Coach told us he's got a torn labrum in both shoulders and he's kept on playing and he's scheduled for surgery Ooh. shortly after this bowl game. Second down and nine. Throw near side. Jackson looking for Dennis Parks. Falls incomplete. Bring us, brings up third and long. Malcolm Washington on the cover for the Bulldogs. I know that Fresno State doesn't like pressure. That's not really who they are. But they may have to create something defensively, a short field or so. Maybe in this situation, this is the time you bring some pressure to try and cause something to happen to help your offense. on the right and gets there 43 Mickelson drops Dreyfus Jackson for the loss it'll set up fourth down well you just have the sense that Fresno State is thinking they got to create some things and their defensive coordinator Nick Toff was thinking right along with the notion that let's go against our nature let's get away from our tendency let's bring some pressure and try and create something first sack on the day for the Bulldogs and now Rice to punt with James Farrowman standing at his own 14-yard line. Fair catch called for and made at the 35 by Deron Smith, and that is where Fresno State will take over for its second possession of the third quarter. Rice by 10. Needing to find a way to move his team forward. They've been in the red zone just one time in the first half of this game and got nothing for it. We could have gotten nothing for it. Martez Waller. Absolutely nothing on that one, and it'll set up second down and 10. Waller on this game so far with just five yards positive yardage. Yeah, tremendous job by, by Rice, but you need confidence bo boosters to your quarterback. There's some positive yardage. And so to the 25 for Martez Waller. Well, they ran the counter and pulled two linemen from left to right and sealed off the inside. And that's the first time we've seen Waller get loose today. Saw 54 Justin Northern out in front of that, a 40-yard gain. This time Burrell will go, will get wrapped when he tries to throw the back pass to Josh Harper. And a net loss on that one. That is a version of a old school triple option. Instead of pitching it, you have the option of throwing it to the receiver a few yards down the field. There wasn't anybody fooled on that one. Nope. I still think they have to find a way to throw the ball to their backs. And I think they have to find a way to move Harper. He's lining up as the outside receiver, and it's pretty easy to, to double him in that spot. Burrell trying to step clear of the pressure, but he won't be able to get away. Down he goes from Dylan Clare, 96, the senior defensive tackle for the Owls, and it brings up third down and long again. Four of 12 on third downs today are the Bulldogs. Throws underneath, but quickly wrapped up. Josh Kazana dropped down there by Nick Elder, the linebacker, number 46, and it brings up fourth down. Well, here's bracket coverage on Harper. He's got two guys waiting on him. Callahan's playing him on the outside man. And there's help inside from Julius White, number seven. And they're switching it up, but they're doubling him all the time. Sometimes it's short and long. Sometimes it's in and out. That's why I say you got to move him around, get him in another position so that he'll be free of some of that. 44-yarder for Cody Cronin. He made one from 44 earlier in the game. What? A hand gotten on the ball in the center of the line.
Brian Nordstrom might have gotten the mitt up on that ball. I tell you, he's done everything defensively today. So another drive that had prospects for the Bulldogs, and they have nothing to show for it. Nordstrom. What a spectacular couple days it has been here weather-wise in Honolulu. After the block field goal, the Owls take over the ball on their own 27-yard line. Dreyfus Jackson with the inside handoff. Brandon Hamilton, 18, gains three for the Owls. So after their first four possessions, they scored three times. The last four times they've had their hands on the ball, the Owls have had to punt. Well, they've been a little bit more conservative because Fresno State has gone away from that too high safety look, giving them or inviting them to throw over the middle. They've largely backed away from that. So they've taken fewer chances. They may get an opportunity here. Jackson throws coming near side. What a sliding catch made by Jordan Taylor, the senior receiver. And a first down for the Owls. He's going to draw a lot of attention by NFL scouts. Big guy, six foot five, runs well, good hands. Dennis Parks with the quick out pass. Gets just about one before he shoved out of bounds. Maybe two. Remember in the first half when Rice kept going after Washington? Yep. And they sort of backed away late in the first half. Now they're starting to pick it up again and throw to his side again. Dennis Parks, the receiver, lined up across from Washington here. Second and seven. Jackson to option. Turns it upfield with a first down before he's knocked aside. So the junior quarterback takes the ball across midfield and a fresh set of downs before he's knocked out of bounds by Dalen Jones. And Darren Smith was also there, and, and Smith is the big hitter. He's the guy we've talked about as an NFL safety. You'll see him come in and see that finish off there. That's 13, Smith getting in there, along with Jones. Low snap, quick recovery. <laughs> Jackson with a handoff to Juwan Davis, and he'll get just a couple. Davis started off with 24 yards on his first carry of the day. Six carries prior to the one he just had, one yard. He's not there yet. He's inching closer to it, but he needs, what, another 60 yards or so, 65 yards to get to 1,000? 64. Credit him officially with uh, 26 yards on the day. He needed 90 to get to the 1,000-yard mark for the season. Near side, here's Mario Hall. Chase knocked out of bounds. Going to gain seven on that one. Shannon Edwards, the junior from Bakersfield, number four, the primary defender on that play. Third and short. Davis again, the uh, setback. Near side, there he is again. And he's gonna go all the way to the house. That matchup we were talking about just a minute ago, Dennis Parks goes 40 yards to the end zone for a touchdown. And Dennis Parks is, is a physical guy, 6'2", 195. And this ball was thrown perfectly by Jackson to lead him up the field. And he just ran through an arm tackle by Washington. And Donovan Lewis also. I mean, that's, that's physical play by a receiver. So after the strong start and the second quarter lull, a nice drive for the Owls. And the point after kick made by James Hairston. Puts the Owls up 23 to six on the Bulldogs. Dennis Parks, the junior out of Converse, Texas. Getting into the end zone in the Hawaii Bowl.
to overtime and try and win it there. It was a fascinating end to a game. Of course, brought about a lot of comparisons to things we may have seen in the past as the uh, Hairston kick goes out of the end zone and Fresno State will take the uh, touchback. Now, you being a Stanford Cardinal. Oh, my goodness, yes. Rod, I, I know you don't really want to see this. Ugh. Well, do you want me to point out all the things that were wrong? Well, there, <laughs> Dwight Garner was down there. <laughs> Should have blown it dead right there. Marette Ford now a forward lateral here. And here's the, the band's on the field, the band's on the field. <laughs> and you know, and they, they flagged us, and Cal had as many players on the field as we did. They didn't flag Cal. But you know what? I'm over it. Uh, yeah. I'm over it. I'm sounds over like it. it. I'm over it. <laughs> sounds like it. <laughs> now you know why I was screaming at the TV when I was yeah, watching the Bahamas Yeah, I'll bet Bowl. you were. <laughs> yeah. Get him down, get him down. It, uh, it sure was a fun ending to the, uh, the first Popeye's Bahamas Bowl. And here at the Hawaii Bowl, Fresno State starting off and needing to get something going. You know, you, you got to help your quarterback more. Yeah. I mean, the last couple of series, they've come out and they've run it on first down and lost yardage, gotten one and two. Now you're in second and long. You, you got to help him on first down more. And I think you, you got to throw the ball confidence throws. Throw to the throw to the backs. Get Harper involved. Move him around. But they got to help him more. They're all going to keep it. It's a good run close to the uh, first down marker. He'll be about one short. It'll set up third down. I'm curious as you watch Burrell. Now, here's a guy who's thrown 17 interceptions this season. And we talked about how long he's holding the ball. Mm -hmm. And so I think, all right, two things. How much of this is coverage? A good job by the Rice defensive backs. But how much of this is the fact that you've been picked off 17 times this year and yeah. it makes you shy of throwing? Absolutely. First down yardage there for Martez Waller, and they'll move the chains for the Bulldogs. Holly? Well, Brian Burrell with those 17 interceptions, we asked the coaches, had they gone over and viewed all of those interceptions with Burrell before this bowl game? And they said, no, that can wait until the offseason. This is his first year as a starter. That learning process will come later. They want him to keep his confidence up, and he will certainly learn and grow in this offseason. But they said there will be competition at the quarterback position. He has the inside track. But competition is healthy at Fresno State, and they want to keep that environment going. At the right shirt, freshman Zach Greenlee behind him. He played one game this season. When Burrell was benched, here's a break to the outside and a shoestring away from having more down the far sideline. Nice stop by J JT Blazengame, but a 16-yard pickup for Martez Waller. Well, more of that would help Burrell, but, but going back to Burrell. Waller again. Not when, much going there. When you've thrown 17 picks, People beat on you to take care of the football. And so naturally, you're going to try and be perfectionist on that. And you take a little bit longer, you hold the ball a little bit longer. So, you, hey, take a sack or throw a pick. You're going to take a sack. Yeah. And he's got to get his confidence where he's playing freely again and not worrying about it. Going to throw here, down the field, looking for Harper in traffic. Who came up with the ball? Intercepted by Rice. Rice Callahan comes away with the ball that was thrown up in the direction of Josh Harper. Yeah, he's not the guy to attack. I know you want to go get Harper, but Callahan, he's also an NFL player. I mean, he's got great man-to-man -man cover skills. And how about the way he shows you his ball skills? He goes up to the highest point to get this. This is textbook. Textbook for a corner. Find it, go up. Take it away from the receiver. And there was a hit on Burrell. Looked like it was Trey Martin who hit him and no flag on it. Didn't look like it was too late, but borderline. So Bryce Callahan, the senior from Cypress, Texas, defensive back leader at his 43rd career start. Comes up with the interception, and Rice goes back on offense. Here's that owl formation we talked about earlier in the ball game. 35, Luke Turner, normally a running back, lined up behind center. Find some running room. Let's go back to the previous play and the hit on Burrell. Was it late? Was it high? 
Uh, you know, when, it, when it's not above the numbers, it's fine. And so that was not anything near targeting. Yeah, nothing really was at all. And it really wasn't that hate. He, uh, that late of a hit, he was in position being pushed by a man. I, I think that's a good no call. So the turnover and the first down yardage for Rice puts them in business now at their own 24-yard line. And again, Luke Turner, a junior out of Gilmer, Texas, last year's Conference USA Championship game MVP. Second straight keeper. And a nice gain there of six. He is a jack of all trades for, for <laughs> Iowa, for Rice. I'd like to have his completion percentage. <laughs> when he throws the ball, he makes the throw. Well, you know, he was a high school option quarterback. Ran it, threw it, had 86 touchdowns in high school. So Dreyfus Jackson back in for David Bailiff's team. And the Owls with a second and four. Derek Dillard is the running back. And he gets the pitch coming near side. Tries to get to the edge. And a nice job there on a couple of fronts. 17 Kyrie Wilson. And uh, 41 also for uh, Fresno State. Brandon Hughes did a nice job pursuing that out to the edge. Fresno State is, looks like they've made a change at the right cornerback spot. Jamal Ellis has stepped in from Malcolm Washington over there. So Dennis Parks, who had the 40-yard touchdown reception on the last drive against Washington, now lined up against Ellis. And here, third down and four. Nothing. Nothing on that far side. You know, Mickelson, we, we talked about his energy and his emotion. He's playing well. I mean, that's a two-yard loss, and he just really shot the gap there and blew that play up. Got and his own rooting section. And, and they should be cheering. He, he's playing a heck of a game. Mickelson, the senior out of San Diego, second-year starter, has played all four years. And started all 14 games this season for the Bulldogs. And so the punt unit on for Rice and Fresno State going to get another shot at the ball. Well, not much running room there for Deron Smith and Fresno State will start at the 38-yard line. Capital One Bowl Mania continuing Friday. Illinois and Louisiana Tech start the day in the Zaxby's Heart of Dallas Bowl. Then it's Rutgers and Carolina in the Quick Lane Bowl and North Carolina State and UCF at the Bitcoin St. Petersburg Bowl. It all starts at 1 Eastern on Friday. Capital One Bowl Mania. So there is uh, the freshman, the redshirt freshman that I mentioned just a minute ago, Zach Greenlee, who came in uh, when Brian Burrell was benched as a starter in the Wyoming game for Fresno State back on November 1st. And the uh, youngster out of Stockton, California is going to get a crack here to see if he can get this Rice offense going. First thing is a give to Martez Waller who comes around uh, the right side and has a nice gain on first down. Well, Holly talked about competition at the quarterback spot and that will likely happen in the spring as you take a look at Greenlee. He's only appeared in a couple of games. He started the Wyoming game in place of Burrell. Found it out again to Waller. He'll be very close to first down yardage. It'll leave him with third and short. Greenlee, a six foot one, 200 pounder, 11 for 23 with one touchdown and no interceptions in his time played uh, this year for the Bulldogs. There's Kazada in with the carry and not going to get through this time. Great penetration on the far side from Alex Lyons, number four for Rice. And a loss of three sets up fourth down. That is the end of the third quarter. So after starting strong and not having quite the presence in the second quarter, this third quarter has been all out. Bulldogs are going to accuse uh, someone of being a Grinch the way that this uh, third quarter has gone for them. 
There's Cody Kronig's punt, fair catch, signal four, and made. Back uh, by Bryce Callahan at the nine-yard line. But both of these teams started the season 0-3, and, mm -hmm. and both of them in the group of five conferences, Conference USA, Mount West respectively, uh, had some really heavy-duty opponents at the beginning of their season and will as well for next year. Well, and I think they're going to have to adjust it. That's, that's too tough, too strong. I mean, I'm all for playing a tough non-conference schedule, but not to the extent where it wipes out your confidence physically and emotionally. When you start 0-3 and, and you play as Rice did, you know, uh, Texas A&M and Notre Dame, Fresno State played Utah, USC, Nebraska, you get beat up, and you don't think you're very good. It takes a while to get your sea legs back, and it took these teams all season to get back to where they needed to be to make it to this bowl game. Handoff and a couple of yards up the middle for Juwan Davis for the Owls. Nope. And uh, time called here. A player missing his helmet, and so that the stoppage of play. This Rice program has come a long way. You think about David Bailiff in his eighth season, and for the first time ever, this school is in a third straight bowl game. Yeah, it's pretty fantastic for them, and they've got it headed in the right direction. Uh, they've got new facilities coming online. Bailiff believes that they will contend for the conference championship next season. He, he didn't just believe they would contend. When, when, when you asked him how he thought they'd be next year, he said without any hesitation, we're going to win the conference. Yeah. Feels good about the state of the program, the talent he has. Jackson throws near side. Here's Parks again, wrapped up and brought down by Adro Edorine, and it'll bring up a third down. There's a player down on the field, and it might be Edorane. And there you see those braces on that shoulder again. Yeah, and he looks like he's grabbing his, his left shoulder. And as we mentioned earlier, you know, he's got shoulder issues, and they've been popping out all season. He'll get them fixed after the hmm. season. And you see that. He goes right to the left shoulder, grabs it, and he tries to reach out and make that tackle single-handed. And, you know... His body it's weight pulling away. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And, and they say every week, you know, this happens. But he wants to finish out this season and plays. Comes off with the right shoulder, goes back out, comes off with the left shoulder, goes back out. Tough, tough guy. So, Edoraine coming off. And now Rice facing a third and three. Flags and more. Talking about this uh, Rice program, 24 wins in the last three years, the most over a three-year period in school history. False start, snap infraction. Number 60 on the offense. Five-yard penalty remains third down. The senior Matt Simonette there with the uh, violation. And when you talk with uh, David Bailiff about it, uh, and uh, particularly when you talk to offensive coordinators, Larry Edmondson Please and Billy Lynch. The game clock to 13 minutes, 47 seconds. They talk about this senior class and the one that came before it that graduated after last season, having changed the culture of the football program at Rice, not just within the football program, but the culture of football within the university. Hardest thing to do, change the culture in the football program. If you have a losing culture, it's hard to root that out. Third long, pressure, 92. Tyler Davison, the senior from Scottsdale, gets in on the quarterback, and a loss for an, a sack for Jackson will set the punt unit onto the field for Rice. He's a really good player. He's been doubled and triple teamed all night long. He's not necessarily a sack artist, but he does push the pocket. He does make plays in the backfield. And when you allow him to be singled up, Look at that. He yeah. just powers his way through a couple of guys. He's he's some kind of nose guard. He's a really good player. First team all Mountain West for a third year in a row. And so the punter, James Faramon, is on. And back deep to receive it is Deron Smith. There are flags. Smith doesn't get much on the return. Now there is more wrestling going on. Back by the original line of scrimmage. Well, they ran into the kicker. 
And that's going to be the first penalty of the day for the Bulldogs. Personal foul. Roughing the kicker. Number 40 on the defense. 15-yard penalty. First down. Justin Green. Well, they went after this for the block. A little surprising since they were going to get the ball with a short field. I thought they might set up a return. Instead, they go after him. Big penalty. Caught him in the leg with the hip. And so that will give the uh, Owls a first down. Or will it? You know, he had an opportunity there to get a short field. And they've blown some chances here. You know, they had a chance earlier to kick a field goal and come within one possession. Yep. They went for it. Hesitated on that because they hadn't moved the change yet, even though they marked the ball out. So it is a first down for the Owls, and the Rice will continue with uh, its attempt to march down the field and run some time off this clock and close out this Hawaii Bowl in their favor. I remember that, that bowl game in the Bahamas? Yeah. <laughs> it was like 49 to 21 in the fourth quarter. Looking long downfield, but Park's not able to get free of the defense. I turned that game on and I thought, well, you know, they're just playing out the string here. And all of a sudden, 49-21 or whatever it was, went to 49-42 with a few seconds left. So don't think this one is over with 12 minutes to play. You don't think Coach Bailiff thinks it's over? Mm, See not that, at all. That march up and down the yep. sidelines and the hand motions going? Well, again, that's why I thought that was such a poor play to go after the punter. You're going to get a short field, return the ball, and see what you can do. And a timeout called by Rice. It's their first timeout of the half. This will be a full media timeout. Sunset in paradise. Like he says, if one person does well in Hawaii, we all do well. Congratulations, Marcus. And Mariota sure was uh, proud that he might in some way be able to inspire Hawaiians with what he's been able to do. This uh, St. Louis High School here in Honolulu, a state champion in football on the island, and now going for a national championship with Oregon in the Rose Bowl semifinal game. Rikus Jackson looking for some room after reversing directions. He'll get some of an eight-yard pickup for Rice. That piece on Mariota, Holly Rowe was gracious enough to go out there and uh, pick that up. You, you got a real sense of just how proud this state is of Marcus Mariota. He's a worthy, worthy candidate. It's too bad they won't have Ifo Ekreolamu playing yep. cornerback against Florida State. I think that really changes that game. Third and short for Rice. Be curious to get your thoughts on, on how Florida State goes about trying to beat Oregon. And vice versa. There's a ball over the middle in the direction of Jordan Taylor. Just overthrown. Had him. Had him open. Middle of the field where they've attacked pretty consistently. Except for a short spell there. Early third quarter. They've been able to throw the ball over there. But back, back to Oregon. Yep. I, I had Oregon as a favorite to beat Florida State. But with Ifo Ekpreolamu out now. Um, I think Florida State's uh, uh, the favorite now. He, he just does so much. He has the ability to shut down a receiver, allows you to do some other things in coverage and to have more guys around the line of scrimmage. I, I think that's a huge, huge loss for Oregon. Wow, caught in traffic. And a flag will come out there for interference with the catch. Piece of extra yardage tacked on to the end of this one, but Deron Smith with nice concentration with people up in his face. Kick catch interference, number 50 on the kicking team. 15 yards from the spot of the foul. First down, Fresno State. Chandler Watkins. A little too close. Got to give him room. So Fresno State will have a great field position to start. They'll be inside Rice territory at the 47-yard line. Well, they're going to have to change their, their play selection, though, in that third quarter. Yeah, they, they really didn't give themselves a chance. They had only two passes in the third quarter. Keep in mind, they've been behind 
the whole game. And running on first down and getting no yardage puts you in a bad spot. So now they've got, they've got to be a little bit more creative on first down, I think. Got to get 17 points in 11 and a half minutes. Here's a throw from Zach Greenlee looking down the near side. Well overthrown his intended receiver of Josh Harper. And falls incomplete. That the first pass attempt for the redshirt freshman who replaced starter Brian Burrell a series ago. You know, John Gruden says you can't go broke taking a, taking a profit. So instead of throwing it deep all the time, you know, those, those little check down. You know, throw it to the back, throw it to the tight end, pick up a few yards, get some confidence, get some momentum going. There's Harper. Nice hit by Malcolm Hill on Harper, but it'll be a nice second down gain yep. for Fresno State. That helps. You know, you were talking about what teams have to play for in, uh, in this game at the top of our broadcast. And for Fresno State now, this is a chance to find out what this young man can do in game circumstances against a good opponent. Because the coaching staff doesn't know. And he's a redshirt freshman, hasn't played an awful lot, started one game against Wyoming. But they have to find out about him as well. Pressure, gets it off, off the hands of the receiver. And that's Justin Falls Johnson. Incomplete. Yeah, Justin Johnson. You know, and when your star receiver, Josh Harper, is being bottled up and doubled, the other guys have to make plays. And if they don't make plays, they don't make those catches, it just gets harder for Harper. And there's no reason to stop doubling Harper when no one else is making a play. Fourth down. Greenlee going back and back and back. And a desperation heave is going to fall incomplete. And the ball will go over on downs and credit the Rice defense with another stop. A frustrating day in Hawaii. Not exactly the paradise the Bulldogs team was hoping for. On the Fresno State Bulldogs. Dreyfus Jackson throwing the screen out to Derek Dillard, who's got a lot of green ahead of him. Can he get there? Just out of bounds, shy of the pylon. 58 yards on a screen pass to Derek Dillard, the sophomore from San Antonio. Great execution. You'll see the end of it here. He does not get to the end zone, but he was actually the blocker who picked up the blitz, slipped outside of it. Jackson got in the ball, and he ought to get the touchdown. Waiting for the signal, and it is. Touchdown, Dillard and Rice. Well, after all that hard work to get down there, yeah. you got to give him the ball. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, well, as I mentioned, Diller just a sophomore, as is the other running back of the, uh, the dynamic duo, Jawan Davis. Both of those to be back for David Bailiff's team for 2015. They have a lot coming back next year. A veteran quarterback to boot. And the point after is good for the senior, James Hairston. Happy day to be an owl in Honolulu. Stadium of the day. You think they've had a pretty good week? <laughs> Kick through the end zone and a touchback. Fresno State to start on its 25-yard line. We are talking about program on the rise before with Rice and further evidence of that recently announced uh, continued investment in expanding the football program at uh, the school. Holly? Well, you know, they have had some great donations. In fact, the naming rights to that end zone project are $20 million donation by a former walk-on. Brian Patterson, who has went from walk-on to a two-year starter, 
made his money in con commercial real estate in Poland, but he has given back generously to this rice owl program. They will have that new beautiful end zone facility, but how about that? From walk-on to starter to major donor, Brian Patterson, way to step up for your program. Message to coaches, treat those walk-ons nicely. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. Yep. Right? Well, David Bailiff in his eighth season at Rice. And certainly they have created a different culture as Zach Greenlee goes for a scamper. Uh, uh, let, let's think about next year for a moment. You know, Bailiff said he thinks his team will be good enough to win their conference. If that's right, remember the group of five, outside the power five, they get an automatic team in. This team, if they are that good with their schedule, they'd have a shot of being the group of five representative next year. Highest ranked. Highest ranked group of, of five, a group right? of five, yep. Of course, you've still got Boise State in there in the Mountain West, who's looked awfully good this year. Mm -hmm. And uh, see what they bring back for next year. And, and as far as Rice is concerned, well, I continue to be fascinated by two angles. First of all, how small the school is, right? Mm -hmm. 6,600 student enrollment, and to put on a top-flight football program like this. You know what that means? When you have a, a student body that small in your private school, Getting walk-ons is hard. It's just too expensive. And mom and dad are like, well, we're going to pay for you to go play football, and we're paying all this money? I don't think so. And the other part of it is, as Greenlee throws and overthrows deep, the high academic standard school. Uh, talked about all the time. Uh, you're, you're familiar with that conversation from your time at Stanford and mm -hmm. so on, mm -hmm. Notre Dame and, mm -hmm. and Vanderbilt and Rice. And when we talked with defensive coordinator Chris Thurman about that, he said, one of the things that you get with having a high academic standard school like that is trying to convince kids not to overanalyze right. while they're playing football. Just remember, it's football. Yeah. You know, let, let's not go too deep with stuff. You know, it's see, see the man, hit the man, wrap him up. See the ball, catch the ball, you know? I mean, you can do some fancy things, but when you overanalyze it, you just sort of get paralyzed. Fair catch taken by Mario Hull, and the Owls will take possession at their 24-yard line. So Christmas Day, dedicated to uh, the NBA, and then Capital One Bowl Mania resumes on Friday. Louisiana Tech, who did an awfully good job against this Rice team. Yeah, they did. In the regular season finale. And the Rutgers and North Carolina. So Rice takes over the ball. Luke Turner back in, 35, in that owl formation. I'm waiting on Jawan Davis to get back in the lineup for Rice. Turner running. Wrapped up and dropped 43, Carl Mickelson, after the short gain of just one yard. Davis needed 90 yards coming into the game to reach 1,000 for the season. He is now 62 yards short. His first run of the day was for 24 yards, and then was pretty much bottled up after that added only four more yards so he's going to need a couple of carries and a couple of big runs to get to a thousand Turner again with a big hole and first down yardage across the 40 yard line Holly well, you're talking about Juwan Davis trying to get to that 1,000-yard mark. I do love it that their coaches are thinking about it. Billy Lynch, the co-offensive coordinator, just came over and was like, Holly, Holly, how many more yards does he need? I said, oh, shoot, <laughs> Coach, 62. They were definitely trying, and I love it that here in the fourth quarter of a bowl game, he's checking on his player. Oh, that's great. That's great stuff. It is. And with the score line being what it is, you can also look down that roster, maybe beyond the depth chart, and look for some people with senior next to their name to maybe touch the ball that don't normally touch the ball. First down, 43-yard line. Turner again on the carry, third straight time. Flag comes out, be a penalty that looks to set the Owls back a little bit of distance. Well, it'll be interesting to see if once they get out of the Owl package, they get Davis back into the backfield for some touches. Holding, number 82 on the offense, 10 yards from the previous spot. 
Repeat first down. Let's not be sloppy, coach saying. And there's the uh, other co-offensive coordinator, Larry Edmondson. Up in the uh, booth. And you see penalties, certainly something that the Rice staff will take away from this game as being something they need to do better. Hasn't been much that's gone wrong for them today, but the penalties have been something that will stand out. Another carry for Luke Turner. Not much there. Talking about uh, the level that this Rice program has come up to. So six players on the team, the first ever Owls to start three bowl games in their career. And all but one of them are seniors, as you see Davis come back in to continue pursuit of that rush. That thousand yard mark. Dreyfus Jackson also back in at quarterback. Davis got the carry, imagine that. <laughs> well, that'll, that'll problem take, take him down to about 60 yards that he needs now. Got three on that one. Make it 59. <laughs> the countdown continues for him. Yeah, it's fun when you're in that position. And you can uh, focus on some things like that at the end of a day. Talking about uh, the, the senior class for Rice, the center, Matt Simonet, hiking the ball. Here's Davis coming at it again. Simonet out in front. Davis gaining some on that yardage total. Finally pushed out of bounds. 28, Charles Washington on the defense there. Gain of 13. He got close to a first down on that. Did he pick it up? No, a little bit short. Eight. At nine there, needs one. Remember after the... Uh, the loss, they're going to line up and go quickly here on fourth down. Yeah, they were going to go quickly. It looks like they actually are going to go for it here. I thought they might just try and pull them off and then kick it. Yeah, they are trying to pull them off. See Jackson there with the bark and the head bob. and They'll let the play clock run out, take the penalty, and then set up the punt. Number six on the offense. Five-yard penalty, fourth down. Well, that takes Davis down to, what, he should be under 50 yards now. He's got 44 on the day. Needed so 90. Needs 46. Needs 46. And uh, five and a half left to go Didn't on the Didn't even need a calculator for that. <laughs> Some days. <laughs> All right, so Fresno State to get another crack at the ball in this one. And we'll talk some about what the Bulldogs have facing ahead of them uh, for their program, big picture wise, and uh, looking ahead to next season. Short yardage on the uh, return by Deron Smith. It's getting pretty late on the East Coast. I would think that uh, those tiny tots ought to be tucked away by now because uh, Santa's got some so, deliveries to make. So now's about the time that, uh, that those three most dreaded words to a dad of young children begin to happen. <laughs> some assembly required. So we talked about Rice and where the program's heading for Tim DeRuiter after winning the last two Mountain West Conference championships. They got to the conference championship game this season, but had a very streaky year. Three losses, three wins, three losses, three wins. And there's how they're going to start next season. Yeah, uh, they didn't do him any favors. That's not a good start. You know, you go to Ole Miss, you play a good Utah team, and you doesn't get your confidence going. Stories of the season for Fresno State, a young team that has gained a lot of experience as Greenlee runs it out of bounds close to first down yardage and what do you what do you think when you look ahead from this game to the spring practice period for Fresno State well, I think they need to address their schedule you, I, you can play one of those three but not three and play Ole Miss that's great you know and then get rid of Utah get rid of BYU they probably can't buy their way out of that right now I get that but 
your confidence just gets shot when you have three games like that and you get physically beat up. I think that, that's a challenge. But I think the program, with all the young players they have, young quarterbacks, they've got a chance to be good. But you just you can't start the season 0-3. Eight true and eight redshirt freshmen played this year for Fresno State regularly. First down yardage there for Justin Johnson. And for Tim DeRuiter and uh, his team, where the quarterback position is concerned, we saw Brian Burrell on the sidelines. They've got um, they've got some thinking to do come spring practice. Well, you know, players grow. They grow over spring, grow over the summer. Think about Alabama for the moment. I mean, Alabama's quarterback situation was a mess. Now people are talking about how great it is. Yep. You know, and that was just growth over the summer and spring practice. Pass batted down in the center of the formation by Zach Pat, the senior from Honey Grove, Texas. 18. I think for Fresno State, there's got to be growth not only at quarterback, but at the wide receiver spot. You know, we didn't see anyone step up and help Harper, so Harper was clamped down tonight by double coverage. So those young receivers, and they are talented, those young receivers are going to have to step up in the spring and, and next fall if Fresno State's going to have a, ch a shot at winning the Mountain West. New athletic director coming on starting January 1st. Uh, Jim Bartko, who comes from Oregon, has a reputation for being a, a, a great builder of things, relationships and programs and fundraising and so on. And he's come in and said that we expect to build a program of excellence in athletics at Fresno State. Is he bringing some of that Nike money with him? <laughs> Wouldn't hurt. Yeah. Are you kidding me? <laughs> it's been a huge difference maker for, for Oregon. Third and ten. Pressure again. And Greenlee running for his life. Caught at the sideline and knocked out of bounds, and it'll be fourth down for... Fresno State. You saw Josh Harper come to the sideline a minute ago and get a tap on the helmet from Brian Burrell. Get to that point in uh, a bowl game now where the seniors, many of whom will play their last ever football game today, well, yeah. begin to feel those emotions. Yeah, and you think about Josh Harper, this was his first bowl game. He missed the last couple of bowl games for Fresno State because he was injured. So he had high expectations and you know, that's got to be tough for him to see that he wasn't able to have a big game in his one bowl game and it's his last game in college. Greenlee throws under pressure, and the receiver didn't uh, didn't make the same read the quarterback did. Ball goes over to Rice on downs. And so the Owls offense will come back onto the field. A group filled with a lot of seniors also. And the quarterback, six, Dreyfus Jackson. Boy, he's had a I think, nice. I, think, I think he's trying to come onto the field, and I'm not sure Coach wants him to, but he's going to be our Capital One player of the game. What a night for, for Dreyfus. He was fantastic. He made the big throws, hit big plays down the field, ran it a little bit, didn't have to run it that much, but he just made good decisions, and you see the big plays. Three touchdown passes, 318 yards. Uh, they needed that. Carried the ball 13 times, 41 yards of rushing as well, and now Jackson gives way. Tyler Stelling, the new quarterback, Juwan Davis, continuing to try and get to that 1,000-yard total in these last three minutes. I think it was interesting, the Rice coaching staff, and talking about Jackson and the receivers, they said, you know, earlier in the week, sometimes on a Tuesday, Wednesday, you go, oh, man, we can't complete a pass. Yeah. But then somehow, by game time, the passing game is clicking. And that's just a, a testament to the hard work that Jackson and those guys put in each day to get better, to be ready for the game. No gain on that play for Juwan Davis. So nothing to add on to his total tour at 100. Stelling to pitch. Uh, that's not going to help the total much either for Juwan Davis. Don't forget, coming up right after the game over on ESPN3 Live, we'll have the trophy ceremony from today's Hawaii Bowl. Presented by Capital One. Now, here's a story coming into the game. On the Rice roster, and uh, readily recognized by the fans, 
38, Jason Carter, a junior running back walk-on who is four foot nine and 140 pounds. You hear the Rice fans, they're so excited about seeing him in the ball game. He, he's an inspiration and Holly knows an awful lot about that story. Well, Jason Carter is four foot nine, and you know he walked onto this team. He walked into Coach Bailiff's office and said, "Coach, I want to play." Well, David Bailiff said, "I am so amazed by this young man's courage. He has been on this team for three years, and tonight is his final game. He will graduate in May with a computer science degree. This is his final game, and we asked the coach if he could get in for one play. Coach said, "Oh, believe me, we want to do it." His eyes got misty. He said, "This man has been an inspiration to us all." You know, that's, that's one of the great things, you know. Bailiff talked about how he loves his players and just seeing the smile on, on these guys. Yeah, that smile. Yeah. He got in a bowl game. He had a carry from the line of scrimmage, and he's barely 140 pounds. And just following up on, on what Holly was, was talking about, Coach Bailiff said that, that these players on this team love Jay Carter for the effort that he puts in. Uh, they look after him. They take care of him. He is a valued and trusted teammate. And great to see that he got in uh, to hey, the bowl game how, on his last day. How about the way he bounced off that hit? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> Fresno State wasn't taking it easy on him. They, yeah. they, they delivered a lick, and he just bounced right off of it. So the fourth down punt after the delay of game penalty and trying to add insult to injury by downing the ball inside the one, but it didn't work. And uh, Fresno State will get another clock at it with a minute and a half to go. So take me into what these emotions are like as a senior when it's when it's time and you know your time with this group of people that you've made this journey with is done. It's hard. It's hard. You look around at the guys that you came in with, your class. You look at the guys that you've spent four or five years with. You've been in, been through so much with them. It's really hard to accept that this is the last time that you guys will all be together. You get really emotional about it. And you've heard stories about guys who've who've left the team before about what it's like when they leave and how, they, how much they miss it and what it's like when you get back together with your classmates. You know, it really makes you think about transition. It's a tough, tough deal. You love your teammates, you love the sport. Pass batted. 47, Brian Nordstrom still in and still after it on the uh, Rice defense and the ball falls incomplete. And in particular for this group of seniors for, for Rice, they've accomplished so much. We talked earlier about how they've changed the culture of the program, not just within the football program, but within the university. And David Bailiff called this for that group a legacy game today. And their legacy is going to be they won a big one. Well, two and one in bowl games, you know, three straight bowl games. That's never been done at Rice before. That's the hardest thing to do. You think about programs that, that have turned it around. It's getting it started. Once you get it going and you created that positive culture, the way you work, the way you, you, you work in the off season, the way you recruit, makes all the difference. First down and out of bounds for Fresno State, Justin Johnson there. So now, the celebration's officially on. The coach is wet. You know, if you get a Gatorade bath, this is probably a good place to get it. Yeah. Not one of those nights when it's 38 degrees out. <laughs> Near side, Aaron Peck with the reception for Fresno State. They get another first down, and we're down to 53 seconds to go in this one. I just don't think any coaches are surprised anymore. No. <laughs> you know, they, they know it's coming. They may not know exactly when, but they have to know they're going to get it. So from scouting out advice from June Jones over the do's and don'ts of bringing a football team to Hawaii to continuing to elevate a program at a school that did not have a history and tradition of football success, the David Bayless team is going to have a very, very Merry Christmas indeed with a big win over Fresno State here in the Hawaii Bowl. I'm really curious to see how good Rice can be next year. They have a lot of players coming back. This season was tough with that three-game start. They got beat up. They weren't healthy all season. You can see tonight how good they can be when they have their full complement of players.
Well, we look ahead now to the rest of what's going to be a very fun and exciting week. There's New Year's Six Bowls coming up. Incomplete pass stopping the clock. Alabama, Ohio State, quick thought on that. Didn't ask you about that earlier when I asked you about Oregon and Florida State. Well, you know, I think like everyone, I, I, most people I would say, I think Alabama should be favored. I think it's going to take a special, special game plan and a special game from Jones, a quarterback, his second start against a veteran team and a Nick Saban coach defense. I think that's challenging. It's really challenging. It's going to be a very fun day for sure. That's why you play the games. Going to throw it deep, overthrow it, and stop the clock one more time. And there'll be just one kneel down left for this Hawaii Bowl to be over and decided in the favor of Rice. You know, we, we focused on the two playoff games, but I'm also really curious to see how Baylor and TCU show up in their respective games, considering that they were teams five and six that just missed out on the playoff. I, I want to see how they show up and perform against some good quality teams. So story on this one today, Fresno State couldn't get anything done on offense and big plays for the Rice offense that wound up posting uh, 30 points on the board. We didn't see the kind of uh, high scoring output from Fresno State we expected, but we saw it from the Owls. Well, Rice delivered a great defensive performance and they doubled Harper, shut him down, and as he got shut down, Fresno State could never get anything going offensively. But man, did that man throw some big passes to get Rice some really big scores. So Rice and David Bailiff with a big win. Tim DeRuiter and his group now 0-6 Fresno State is in bowl games. And DeRuiter 0-3 in his three years there. So the final score of the Hawaii Bowl, Rice 30, Fresno State 6. For Rod Gilmore and Holly